Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Title Talk with Kevin Thatcher, the owner and CEO of Independence Title here. And we have a very special guest talking, which was kind of inspired by another video I saw him put up, uh, Yusuf, which is with um, Movement Mortgage. I follow him on Instagram. So welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Appreciate it. So tell a little bit. So obviously your slogan on, on Instagram is the, the fit lender. Uh, I'm kind of known as, as the title ninja. I, I own a full-size American Ninja Warrior gym. So I believe in fitness. I love it. So just tell the viewers a little bit so they get to know you while people are hopping on the show. Uh, just a little bit about who is the fit lender, how'd you get in the business, and a little bit about you. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, good to hear. I'm going to have to come explore the, that, uh, that gym very soon here. Um, but uh, like you said, my name is Yusuf with Movement Mortgage here in Miami, uh, based out of Brickell. Um, I am the fit lender because um, I used to be a, a professional trainer as well. I used to train a bunch of athletes, um, and I'm still heavily involved in, uh, in fitness myself. Um, I believe in a well-balanced life between work and, and the gym. And uh, so if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm at the fit lender. What I try to do is create that blend, that fun atmosphere of uh, educated consumers and realtors and, uh, and, all of my, and all of my business partners on the mortgage world and also spicing it up a little bit with a little bit of fitness and health and nutrition and things to keep you going. Um, I've been in the business for about five years now. I went to the University of Florida. So go Gators, if anyone's watching, that's a Gator. And um, I've been with Movement for about three years now, and uh, we're a great company, and we have some, some awesome stuff going on. So if you guys have any questions on, on the mortgage side as well, we'd love to hear from you. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I believe so much in fitness. I get up uh, at 4 a.m. I do a lot of my social media, responding from stuff in the middle of the night, and then uh, I work out with a U.S. Marine. And uh, very difficult workout. And uh, I just believe in it. I believe in, in health and fitness and, and well-being just gives you mental clarity for, for when you're then going to start your day and, and hop into the business world. So, again, thanks for joining us. And, uh, you know, today, today the reason we wanted to talk about and a lot of the people saw in the comments and one of the videos I saw with you, you know, we're at May 15th. You know, we had the global pandemic that has unfortunately hit the entire world. And there's so many mixed stories out there that people are talking about, well, I'm just not going to make my rent payment or I'm not going to make my mortgage payment and they'll just have the payments on at the end. And I think there's some truth to what people are saying, but, but there's also some not so truthful stuff that people are saying. So let's talk a little bit just about, you know, what happens with borrowers that, you know, can't make their mortgage payment. You know, it's, it's May 1st hit, they lost their job, they don't have the money, they're not able to make it. What do they do? Yeah, that's a good question, Kevin. So as we all know and we've seen, there's a lot of economic stimulus going on these days um, in all different realms of, of the world and all different realms of their finance, having to do with rent, mortgage, and other things as well, car payments, credit cards, things like that. Specifically in mortgage, though, um, we've heard the word forbearance pop out a lot, and it's caused a little bit of confusion simply because it is a brand new topic. No one's really ever thought to apply for forbearance prior to COVID-19, for the most part. Um, so what forbearance is, it is the act of forbearing or postponing a mortgage payment uh, because you're suffering some sort of financial hardship and you're unable to make your payment because you were furloughed, fired, um, or just some other you know, um, extenuating circumstance. So what mortgage uh, services are allowing consumers to do is they're allowing them to apply for forbearance for a certain period of time, meaning that they are not going to have to make a mortgage payment for three months, four months, six months, depending on what agreement you come in with your with your lender now it's also important to understand that there are implications of things like that we all know the saying is there's no such thing as a free lunch and it does not exclude mortgage payments especially you know for most people mortgage payments are the largest liability that they hold in their in their financial situation right so uh, assuming that mortgage forbearance is a free lunch is a very big mistake and it can have severe implications on you if you apply for it and, and, you, and you pursue it, um, especially if you don't need it. So it's important to understand those implications, Kevin. Yeah, and I think a lot of that has to do, you know, I was very heavily involved with the uh, PPP loans and the idle loans through the SBA. I was doing tons of webinars and research and, you know, we were educating people on on what to look for and what to listen for and how to apply. And one of the things that, that people realized once they got the money, there were some real restrictions that if they took that money, there were certain things they needed to do that if they weren't able to do, 
they better have returned that money because yeah. it puts them in a negative position. So let's flip a little bit, you know, because obviously you're in the mortgage business. So you deal with with homeowners that want to refinance, but you also deal with homeowners that are renting and, and are looking to, to buy a home. Right. And, you know, the first thing that came out was as soon as they, they shut the world down, you know, everyone was telling people, well, just don't pay your rent in April. And I'm laughing. I'm like, but the landlord still has to pay their mortgage payment. So why would you not pay your rent just because you lost your job when the landlord still needs to pay your, you know, the mortgage payment? And I feel for people that lost their job and I get it. But what people don't realize, it's not as easy as don't pay your rent payment. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Kevin. So as a landlord to several units myself, I kind of was shivering in my boots when I when I saw those kind of uh, communications get broadcasted on social media and otherwise, because I do have mortgage payments that I need to make for my tenants. Right. And luckily, I have great tenants, so I haven't had to um, deal with that just yet. But um, just like we talked about, there are implications to actions. So when it comes to not paying your rent or not paying your mortgage, you need to understand that whenever you go and you know seek any type of credit or whether it's a mortgage, credit, car loan, you are audited and underwritten to a certain extent. Right? When it comes to mortgages, you do have to prove certain things to, in order for you to, to, to receive a mortgage, you know, two years of income two years of employment history, um, two years of residence history. So specifically with residence history itself, whenever we look at clients and we pre-approve them for a mortgage, we need to look back 12 or 24 months to document their rent payments or their previous mortgage payments, right? So um, since COVID-19 and, and this whole forbearance thing is very new, we don't have specific guidance nationwide regarding what exactly is gonna happen when somebody wants to apply for a mortgage and they've been in forbearance, why? because people simply haven't been in forbearance for long enough for us to be able to see a recurring theme with clients and how they're getting denied or approved mortgages. But as of today, uh, May 15th, we've gotten guidance from at least our underwriters on moving mortgage. And I would say most other Fannie and Freddie lenders that if you do miss a payment due to forbearance, you need to give yourself a waiting period after you've resumed monthly payments in order for you to be able to refinance or purchase another property. Right. So in thinking about that real quick, Kevin, it's going to what is that idea? The idea says that if a client cannot make their mortgage payment and does not make their mortgage payment for a certain amount of months, then after they resume normal operation, there has to be a buffer period where they continue to make mortgage payments in order for them to receive another loan or for them to refinance or purchase. So we're sitting here in May. Right. If someone's in forbearance. Today is the first. The, today is May 15th. Um, if they miss their, their mortgage payment or not really miss, but if they forbear their mortgage payment and don't make it today, then they're in forbearance, you know, no matter how you slice it. And depending on when they get out of forbearance, maybe it's three months, August 15th, you cannot purchase another property, refinance a property until August 15th, 2021. So we want to make sure that everybody who's, who's, who's in your sphere and everybody who's in my sphere and everybody in general who's in the process of homeownership understands what are the implications of something like that to you? What are the implications of you not being able to purchase in a year for a year or not being able to refinance for a year? How much money are you going to lose? If you're sitting there at a high interest rate and you plan on refinancing after you're done forbearance, how much money are you going to lose every single month by not being able to refinance for a year? Is it more or is it less than your forbearance amount on, on your monthly mortgage? Or how is it going to impact you over the next 12 months knowing that there's going to be several properties coming on the market that may be a good opportunity for you to purchase a property, whether it's an investment or a primary home. We see, you know, the real estate market, and I'm not a real estate agent, so I'm not gonna dive into pricing and, and trends and stuff like that, but putting two and two together, I do assume there's gonna be certain type of pricing corrections in our market. So are you willing to put yourself in that position to where you can't capitalize on opportunity, whether it be for you and your family to purchase a primary home or a second home or a vacation home, or for you to purchase an investment and make some residual income off that kind of stuff. So that's all the things you have to think about, not by yourself. You got to think about it with somebody like Kevin. You got to think about it with somebody like me um, so you can assess your financial situation and not put yourself in a pickle. Absolutely. You know, thank you for that. Yeah, my most recent book, I wrote a book titled Rescue Your Business, which talks about surviving the, the crash of 2008. Um, so I was in the mortgage business. I started in the mortgage business in 2001 when I first moved down to Florida. So, you know, I kind of understand a lot of the things that you're talking about. And now I haven't, you know, written alone in, in many years. 
Uh, you know, I also hold a real estate broker's license and I haven't bought or sold the house uh, for a client in, in many years, but I have a great understanding of the business. And I understand, you know, like when, when you're going to want to go verify, let's say you do a, a verification of rent, you want to do a VOR with the landlord and you don't realize that the landlord is going to be super honest and put down that you were 30 days late on a, a rent payment. How does that affect a borrower that, you know, whether let's say it's a first time home buyer is looking to buy a house, you know, what are the impacts of, of missing, let's say just one, forget about filing uh, eviction, but let's just say they miss one and they think that the landlord may not report that, but for some reason they have a property manager doing their paperwork and, and that VOR comes over to the lender and it says 30 days late, one time. What type of negative effect does that have on that person buying a home? Right, right. So that's, that's a great question. And um, I, I, I hate speaking on things that I haven't personally experienced myself because it, it puts me in a situation where I can't say it without a shadow of a doubt because I haven't closed a loan like that before um, in terms of uh, missing one mortgage payment or one rent payment or something like that in this type of circumstance with COVID, right? Because it is this unique circumstance. But in general, just, 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 from, a very, just from a very logic logical perspective here, I would just say for a consumer to put themselves in the shoes of a lender or in the shoes of somebody like, like me as a, a loan officer or somebody who's going to be giving you a mortgage. If you see somebody has been late or has missed a payment and then you then in turn decide to request another you know, instrument like a mortgage or another unit to rent from somebody else, logic would just say that there would be some sort of discrepancy or issue there for you to, to receive another unit to rent or another or another mortgage to uh, another mortgage to uh, to take on. We know that currently, COVID or no COVID, if you are 30 days late on a mortgage payment, even just one time, you can't purchase a mortgage for, for 12 months, right? Um, we've had several cases here with me and my clients that that's happened to them before. They've missed a mortgage payment and they can't uh, purchase for 12 months minimum. And sometimes it's more depending on how our automatic underwriting systems um, assess your your risk profile, but in general, when it comes to rent, um, it's going to be very similar to a mortgage. It, it'd be different because rent's not necessarily going to be documented on your credit report as a, as a mortgage would, uh, because you're not actually paying down a liability. You're more so just um, creating housing history in this particular situation. But that's not to say that rent is not going to negatively impact you on your approvals. So before you decide to uh, skip your rent payment or, or tell your landlord you can't make your rent. Um, understand that we're going to go back to that same phrase. There's no such thing as a free lunch and you need to make sure you're communicating with your landlords and understanding that if you are late on a housing payment, um, that can negatively impact you in the future and that can come back and bite you in the butt uh, later on. Yeah. And that was kind of my question. I wasn't talking more COVID because one of the things that I'm telling people is, is stop the excuses about COVID. I get it. And it's a global pandemic, but it's no different than a crash of a market. It's no different than you lost your job and you can't make your rent payment. Now, may the lenders institute some type of special um, allowance for something like this? Maybe, but let's not let's not think they're going to do that. And, and let's focus on the fact that you miss your mortgage payment, you miss your rent payment, and somewhere down the line, it's going to get reported and it's going to hurt your ability in order to uh, you know, in order to borrow. So for the people that got that stimulus check of, let's say, $1,200 or more for their family, you know, you want to think you're going to go spend it on something other than your rent payment. Be clear, you need to make your rent payments. You need to make your rent payments because your landlord needs to make the mortgage payments and they will get angry and report it late. You need to make your mortgage payments because it is so difficult. And we see this with clients all of the time that, you know, they, they miss one payment on their credit report and then they're always blaming someone else that, oh, it wasn't me. I didn't miss that payment. That's not reported correctly. And good luck trying to go to the credit bureau, getting them to change it. It's going to be yeah, very exactly. Important. You know, those, those are all great points, Kevin. And one thing to kind of note here is that, yes, we are in unprecedented times, but we have we have certain outlets for that. Right. Just like we mentioned, we have the EIDL grants and loans. We have the PPP loans. We have new stimulus bills that are being negotiated between the Senate and then the Congress and the House of Representatives that's going gonna, gonna to give us some certain guidance regarding what's going to be happening in the future. So sound advice would say keep in contact with your, your local mun uh, municipality or whoever you follow along in, in the government to understand what's going to impact you because there are things in the works having to do with housing payments. There are There is talk about subsidizing people's rent, about subsidizing people's mortgage payments, right? But 
assume, you know, assume that you were in a circumstance outside of this pandemic and that if you decide that you don't make enough money because so you can't pay your rent or you lost your job because you can't pay your rent um, or you can't pay your rent because you lost your job, you're not necessarily just going to continue living in a place that you can't afford to live in. Right. So outside of COVID-19, if say I decided that I live in a, in a luxury high rise condo here in Brickell, I have a pretty steep rental payment. Right. If I lost my job, my first thought would be I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to move. I might have to move in with, with mom and dad. I might have to find a, find a, move in with a friend. I might have to find my own condo somewhere that's cheaper, something like that. But I would have just thrown my hands up and be like, you know what? I can't pay my rent anymore, but I'm going to stay here anyways, right? Because you know, there, there are certain avenues you have to explore there. But the fact of the matter is we're in this unique pandemic where everyone feels like they can just kind of, you know, throw it under the rug and, and, and everybody's doing it. So why don't I do it too, right? So... That's the advice, guys. Keep in contact with your local municipality. Stay in contact with uh, with with president and uh, and his cabinet and what's going on and what they're implementing because they are working on things um, that um, that can benefit you. But um, before you take any adverse action, understand that you need to consult with professionals um, in the business that can guide you and give you um, you know something to to chew on before you decide to to, to put your foot in the wrong puddle. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Last question for you before we wrap it up. I like to try and keep them under 20 minutes. We're just approaching 16. Absolutely. We're hearing a lot of talk about the interest rates. So can you just talk a little bit about, you know, where are the rates right now? You know, I love when people always say, well, rates are at an all time low. And I'm like, you didn't know when rates were high. So <laughs> when the rates creep up a little bit, three, four, five percent, rates are still at an all time low. If you can borrow money at five percent on a house, I mean, that's, that's just still unbelievable. Yeah. But now we're looking at, you know, uh, rate rates, you know, two, three percent, four percent. And then, you know, as soon as they come out and say negative interest rates, everyone's like, oh, I'm going to borrow money and my interest rate's going to be negative. That means the bank's going to pay me. And I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. So talk yeah. a little bit just about interest rates. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great question. We, we deal with this every single day. So um, interest rates are, in fact, at historic lows. So for somebody who's a consumer and wants to understand what historic lows means, simply Google it, get on there and type in what has been interest rates over the past 60 years and look at a chart look at where they've been look at where they're at right now right so um interest rates are at historic lows and in terms of what your interest rate would be we have low level pricing adjustments llpas as lenders to price your loan out things like what's your credit score what kind of property are you buying how much are you putting down things like that that's how we assess your your uh, your your uh, your interest rate so not everybody's gonna have the same rate but just you know, a little, a, a, a quick little estimate here. Rates are in the three percent for a lot of people, right? Um, sometimes in the high two percent if someone's looking for a shorter term. So don't focus so much on what the rate is. Just understand they are historic lows. So the cost of borrowing money right now is significantly less than what it was last year, and and, and astronomically less than what it was, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, Whenever you hear things about Fed rates, just understand that Fed rates are indirectly core. They are related, but they're indirectly related to mortgage rates. Mortgage rates are based off of the 10 year Treasury bond. Um, so if you want to follow mortgage rates specifically, follow along how the 10 year Treasury bond um, flows. And that's going to tell you how the mortgage rates flow. Fed rates indirectly related, but they're more so short term rates. So Fed rates decide overnight lending rates, meaning that when a bank like Chase wants to lend money to a bank like Wells Fargo overnight in order to meet the reserve requirements, that's the rate they're lending each other money at. The reason they would lend each other money is because they might have to meet reserve requirements. Your bank, if you bank with Chase, needs to have a certain amount of money there. So if you come in and you're like, yo, give me my money, you know, they have it, right? So they end up every single night, they lend each other a little bit of money here and there, and they charge each other interest on that, on that money. Well, well, right now the economy is a little slow, right? So the government doesn't want anybody to hold on to their money. They want banks to feel comfortable lending each other money so that we don't get trapped in some sort of liquidity issue. And then we have bigger problems to worry about. That's a whole other live for the whole other day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, but, um, but the bottom line is take advantage of the historically low mortgage rates and understand how that impacts you. Don't pay attention to the number, but understand how it impacts you. How's a 1% change in a payment going to impact you and your family in terms of what you can afford, what you can't afford, what you can buy and what you can't buy? Consult with Kevin, consult with me and talk to us, have a conversation about what does this mean for me specifically? And we'll tell you and we'll show you and we'll point you in the right direction. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. How can the viewers, if they want to get a hold of you, ask you some more questions? How do they reach you? Yeah, uh, you can definitely follow me on Instagram. It's at the fit lender, the fit lender, or uh, you can call me on my cell phone. My personal cell phone is available to everybody here. 
area code 352-328-9828. Awesome. Thank you. For those of you watching uh, live today at 2 p.m. Friday, May 15th, we are having a live seminar talking about foreclosures and REOs, not from the title perspective, but on the perspective of what the uh, foreclosure side looks like. We're going to have on one of our attorneys from our national underwriter is going to cover that topic. So don't forget to get registered or watch it live. We're going to try and stream it live on our Facebook. Uh, and again, thank you for joining us today to kind of educate our viewers a little bit on interest rates, on forbearance, on what they should do with their mortgage payment. Just to recap, don't miss your payment unless you absolutely have to. And if you absolutely have to, call the bank and make arrangements with them ahead of time. And don't trust the person you're talking to at the bank. They may say something and it may not necessarily be true. They may say, oh, don't worry about it. So make sure you double check, triple check before you start missing a payment. So as always, thanks for joining us on, on our little title talks here that we do every single week. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. We're going to bring you some more live events coming shortly. So this is Kevin Thatcher signing off. Don't forget, work hard, stay focused, never quit. We'll see you on the next show. Thanks for joining us. Stay safe, everyone. Take care, guys. Have a good one.